VCU basketball is on the air live from the Stewart C. Siegel Center as the VCU Rams will look to get back on the winning track as they take on the Bison of Howard University. Welcome courtside. I'm Sean Roberts. Great to be joined by John Feinstein. A little change in the VCU lineup tonight. No Ace Baldwin in the uh, in the starting lineup as he sprained his wrist Wednesday against Jacksonville. But uh, Jalen Deloach will get the start. We'll talk more about that throughout the course of the game. But first, our Carmax keys to the game started with Howard. Well, Howard can't turn the ball over against VCU's pressure because you get their defense going and get the crowd going. That that's just not good when you're on the road. And they've got to shoot well from three. They are a good three-point shooting team. And if they don't shoot the ball well from three, they're not going to have a chance to win this game. For VCU, uh, it's it's going to be take good shots. And what I mean by that is VCU's turnover numbers aren't that bad. But they've taken a lot of bad shots the last couple of days. And that's been a focus for Mike Rhodes since the Jacksonville game. And they've got to defend those three-point shots that Howard is definitely going to put up. Those are the CarMax keys to the game. CarMax home with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And now the players to watch first with Howard. Well, Elijah Hawkins is their leading scorer. He is their best player. He makes things happen for the other guys on the floor. But he will not start uh, because even though he's, he's doing very well in the classroom, uh, Coach Kenny Blakeney wants to get his attention that he needs to be more focused on things off the court. He'll come off the bench very quickly, but he won't be. He won't start tonight. And for VCU, of course, with Ace Baldwin out, Brandon Johns becomes that much more important. Had 20 points the other night against Jacksonville. He has been the Rams' most consistent player all season, uh, Sean. And he needs to have a big night tonight with, as you said, Ace Baldwin watching from the bench. His 20 points against Jacksonville, a career high against the Dolphins on Wednesday night. Those are our players to watch. VCU and Howard move us away from tip-off tonight here at the Single Center. Here are the starting lineups. First, for the VCU Rams, as we mentioned, no ace ball went in tonight's game. He is not dressed. He has on his skivvies. And in place of a Jade Nutt will move from two to the point guard. Zip Jackson will get the start tonight also. Which he's done well before. Yes, he has. They'll go to three forward a line of Jameer Watkins, Jalen Deloach back in the game, and also Brendan Johns Jr. And then for Howard, they have Jelani Williams, Bryce Harris, Steve Settle, Kobe Dickinson, the Cornell transfer, and Jordan Wood, the starting five. Opening tip controlled by Jake Nutt and VCU, and we're underway. And Jordan Wood, a great story, kid from San Antonio, Texas. You'll notice right away that he's white, and he's starting for an HBCU. His mother is Mexican, his dad is white, and he loved Howard when he visited and decided to come. And Brandon Johns gets things going for VCU with that baby hook. It's a good start for the Rams. He's coming off a career-high performance Wednesday night against Jacksonville. Rams come with the full court press and underneath is Bryce Harris who rocks the rim for Howard's first two. Well, they almost had a turnover there on a 10 second violation. And didn't quite get it and Howard ends up with a high percentage shot. Mitch and Jalen Deloach missed Wednesday's game with an undisclosed Ill illness getting the start tonight. Zeb Jackson in the starting lineup to Watkins with 10 to shoot. A lot of guys now slipping on the floor. Really? The ball right, is right loose. in that area. And here's Bryce Harris with the steal against Nunn, going up and under, and scores over Deloach. Tough shot by uh, Harris, but I think they got to do something about that corner of the court. But three different players slipped on that position. Here's Nunn left open for three. Deloach, an offensive rebound. And they got the offensive rebound, but that's an example of the kind of shot Mike Rhodes wants to get away from. The quick three. The ball doesn't touch the paint. They get away with it because they get got the offensive re rebound. Deloach finding Johns. Extra pass to Watkins. Now that was a good shot because of the extra pass that you mentioned. He Set was wide open. Settle the rebound. The redshirt junior from Glen Art, Maryland. Here's Bryce Harris who scored the first four Howard points in the game. Kobe Dickinson, the Cornell transfer, 10 to shoot now for the Bison. Dickinson couldn't get it to go, keeps it alive, but to Deloach. Didn't get the roll. Howard has two grad students on this team, one transferred from Cornell, one from Penn. And Howard, of course, is known as the Harvard, Harvard of the HBCUs, and that's what Kenny Blakeney's looking for, that kind of student. Here's Johns again. The rebound to Jordan Wood, the junior from out of San Antonio, Texas, that John mentioned about earlier in the game. 
pass deflected out of bounds by Nunn. And now Toby Lawal, who started Wednesday night and achieved a career high in points with 10, along with Nick Kern and David Shriver comes in for Deloach, Johns, and Watkins. That's uh, Mike Rhodes goes to his bench early every night, but that's three guys coming out after two and a half minutes. Not that unusual, but hard not to notice. Tough shot there. Settle couldn't convert. LaWall showing that leaping ability, comes down with the rebound. Almost three minutes gone in the opening half, and VCU trailing by two. Nunn got the start tonight at the point in place of ace ball, went out with a sprained wrist. 10, under 10 now to shoot for VCU. Jackson has it with five, and it's called for a palm. Well, Roger Ayers has now made his one palming call of the year because every ref is required to make one. And that's it. That, that's all they need. Now, you mentioned before we came on, this is an ACC crew. It really tonight. is. Tonight, Roger Ayers, Les Jones, and Tim Cloggerly. And you also mentioned they've got some Final Four yep. experience with this, uh, this trio. They do, and uh, this is a Sunday night crew in, 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 at this level because these guys like to work as much as they can. On a Saturday night, they'd be working ACC games. Sunday night, they're here, which is good for us. The inbound to Jelani Williams, who was short on that layup. VCU with another chance to tie or take the lead. Josh Banks in now for the Rams. Here's Nunn on the baseline. Cut off. Shriver for three. Still can't get his touch from outside. Shot didn't go down, but that was good ball movement to set that shot up. Here's Jordan Wood against Shriver. Whoops. Dixon has it back to Wood. He'll shoot for three. And Howard is on a 7-2 run to start the game. Wood, you could tell when Wood released that ball that he knew it was going in. He's a 40% three-point shooter this season. A career 36% shooter from behind the arc. They left Banks open for three. And they can't buy a basket, but they're getting good shots. Dixon the, Dixon the rebound. Howard on a 7-0 run to start the game. Here's Harris for three. Another triple by the Bison and a 10-2 run to start the game. This is just the start Mike Rhodes did not want. He did not want to give Howard confidence on the road. He wanted to be able to say, we're the better team. Nick Kerr with a strong move. Rams has started one for six from the field before that basket. Rams down by six. A little bit more pressure by VCU defensively on this trip. Dixon has it against the wall. Settle. Nice pick and roll there, but good defense by the Rams. Force Settle to settle for a poor shot. Shriver thought about shooting at three, and Settle stripped it from behind. Up ahead to Williams, and it goes off his foot. Good play by Jake Nunn, and that brings us to our first media timeout. Howard on the road with some confidence as they lead by six on VCU. Synergy Technical is proud to sponsor tonight's game and will donate to store, SOAR 365 for every point that the Rams score tonight. Right now, they have four and trail Howard by six. Early on, it has been the, the shooting of Howard. They're four of eight from the field, John, at 50%. VCU just two of seven from the field. I was say, it's also the shooting of VCU. Um, for the most part, they've got good shots, got good ball movement, what Mike Rhodes was looking for. But they haven't been able to get anything to go down, and Howard's done a good job handling the pressure so far. Mike Rhodes, the head coach, as you just saw in the huddle, in his sixth season at VCU, 5-4 and four this year, 4-1 four and one at home. They had their 10-game home win streak snapped Wednesday night by Jacksonville. He's won 107 games at his time here at VCU, 351 career games if you count times at Rice and also at Randolph-Macon. He was the head coach at Randolph-Macon when he was 28. Yeah. Uh, and other than when he was an assistant here for Shaka Smart, he's been a head coach ever since. And he coached Jerome Blunt, who is on his staff currently. Yes. VCU with the ball, down by six. The five that were on the floor before the timeout nice as Josh play. Banks goes inside and scores off the pretty assist. That's exactly what Mike Rhodes wants to see. A, a nice back cut, a good finish. And he, he told me yesterday that he had to come to Jesus with his players on Friday. And he said, look, what we're doing isn't good enough. 
we have to be better than this. We have to be tougher. We have to take better shots. We have to run our offense more efficiently. And he said, I haven't done enough to tell you guys when you're not doing enough, when you're not playing well. He said, I'm going to coach you hard, and I'm going to love you harder. Zip Jackson almost had a turnover. Three as seconds he, left to get harassed, it across. He harassed point guard for Howard, new in the lineup. It's number 55 for Howard. That's Freedom Reigns, the freshman from out of Los Angeles. And by the way, if that name sounds familiar, his dad is Ving Reigns, the great actor. Yep. And I, I was wondering, I asked Kenny if, if uh, Freedom Reigns makes a bucket, do we get some Arby's? Because they have the meats, right? That's right. That's Ving Reigns' voice, by the way, on those commercials. Steve Settle got an offensive rebound and will go to the free throw line for Howard. Steve Settle is a remarkable story, as you and I were discussing off air. When he was a freshman at the Matha, which is where Kenny Blakeney went to school, he was five foot nine. Didn't play at all. By the time he was a senior, he had grown to six foot nine. But he weighed 145 pounds. So he still didn't play. Now he weighs maybe 180. They call him skinny settle, but he, he's big enough that he can play at this level. He's got a slender build. He sure does. And he's going up against Josh Banks on this set. That was the foul was on the floor on VCU and not a shooting foul for Howard. So they have it now with six to shoot. Here's Settle looking at the shot clock, a straight on three. Not the shot they wanted, obviously. And an offensive rebound by Reigns. Here's Wood in the corner. Halfway down. Another offensive rebound by Bryce Harris, who scores. He is four for four from the field so far tonight. And now, Howard is ahead by five. That was the third shot that Howard got. Zip Jackson matches the shot on VCU's offensive end. His first basket cuts the lead to three. And a steal by Deloach. Behind the back to Jackson, and he can't finish. The tip was a miss. And they're going to get a foul. I think it's going to be on Banks. Yep, it is. Settle was actually bringing the ball down court against the press there. And he made a terrible pass. So we're not going to get too impressed with that. We'll see how he does. I think Coach Blakeney will uh, say, Settle, please don't do that again. Yeah. Got to mention Kenny Blakeney, the head coach of Howard in his fourth season. Four and seven this year, as you know, played at Duke under Coach K. Also played at the Mathis, John pointed out under the legendary Morgan Wu. Yeah, that's two pretty good coaches he played on, like 2,400 wins between yeah. them. Uh, so he's learned a little about basketball. He's really done a nice job uh, taking over at Howard, rebuilding the program. They haven't been in the NCAA tournament since 1981. Last year was their best year in a long time. Won 15 games last year for the Bison. Here's Jelani Williams with 10 to shoot against Johns. Here's Wood now with five to shoot against none, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Jordan Wood. Well, they got him for the offensive foul, but I was actually impressed that he didn't panic with the shot clock and tried to take it to the basket. Just didn't do a great job of taking it to the basket, but it was a smart play. If you know when you come to VC home games, the Peppas always kind of count you down like two or three seconds ahead of the yeah, shot clock to yeah. try to get the opposing team to, to bait on that. That has happened in the past. It does happen on occasion, but usually that's part of the scouting report when you come in here. Don't pay any attention to the Peppers unless they're actually playing music. Here's Watkins attacking the rim and scores. His first basket, he was 0 of 8 Wednesday night against Jacksonville. Got his first two, and it's a one-point Howard Lee. It's a good confidence builder. Watkins there, as you said, not having made a shot on Wednesday. Rams down by one. Wood has it against Johns. Nice spin. Looked like he walked. Deloach came and got the block. Good help by Deloach there. Rams can take the lead. Beautiful pass to Deloach. That's exactly what Mike Rose wants to see. And Kenny Blakeney is going to get a timeout here, even though there's a TV timeout coming because he doesn't want this to get out of hand too quickly. Another Virginia Credit Union assist of the game, and we'll talk about that after the break. Stay with us. There's a good look at the Howard Bison huddle with head coach Kenny Blakeney, as we mentioned in his fourth season. 
with the Bison. They're on the back end of a 6-0 VCU run over the last 90 seconds. And that eight-point lead has evaporated now. VCU leading by one. Yeah, and that, again, we talked about bad offense leading to bad defense, and that's what's happened to Howard here in the last couple of minutes. They had a couple turnovers, had a couple possessions where they didn't get a good shot, and VCU has been able to push the ball down the court and get good, very good shots. Kenny Blakeney told me yesterday that he, they like to play up tempo. He said, I don't want to get in a transition game with these guys. It just won't work for us. And now they got trouble here getting it across midcourt. And Jelani Williams has to burn a timeout with just had one second left on the 10 second count. Well, and that's two timeouts Howard has taken so far in the first eight minutes. You don't want to do that in the first half. And the rule changed a few years ago. Um, it, the rule used to be if you call the timeout, you got a new 10 seconds to get across midcourt. Now Howard will still only have one second. So they're going to have to call a play to basically get the inbounds pass across midcourt. That changed, I believe, I think after that game in the Big Ten where that happened, they called a timeout. I don't know if it was Michigan and Wisconsin, but it happened. It was Michigan and Wisconsin, and it was the game that led to the fight, oh, the post-game right. fight with the coaches. So, and it, it, it shouldn't have been a factor. Wisconsin was up like 20. Yes. But Michigan insisted on pressing in the last couple of minutes, and Wisconsin called a timeout to Try to, to get to a call set, the call reset the 10 second count, yeah. yeah. So now with one second remaining on the 10 second count, well, yeah. guess not, they will reset it. They don't get that. Jelani Williams brought it over, and Jalen Deloach comes up with the steal. Buckle up! It would have been better off if they turned it over on the, on the inbound. I don't understand that. I know the rule changed, but I must have missed something. An 8-0 run for VCU, which leads now by 3, 15-12. That's a nice pass. And Dickinson finishes over Johns to break that 8-0 run. Dickinson with his first basket. Johns lost control. Deloach has it now for VCU, who leads by a point. Johns in the corner for three. Still can't buy one from distance, and a rebound to settle for Howard. Good news for VCU is they've been getting such good shots off the turnovers. There's another near turnover. Bodies on the floor, and the Loach knocks it out last. He thought Dickinson touched it last, but Roger Ayers on top of it and said that the Loach last touched it. Roger Ayers got that call right. He gets most calls right. As long as his grill cream is, is there in the locker room, he's ready to go. Mike Rose thought that was a deflection on Dickinson. And well, Mike Rose wanted it to he be wanted a deflection. It. I don't blame him for that. I should take a minute here while we got a little break. My daughter Jane, my 12-year-old daughter, is watching the game, and she she uh, texted me and said that our opening was good. The opening so was we good. Passed the first test. Passed the first test. Yeah. Hopefully she'll listen to the rest of the game. Jane hopes. would make a great Peppa because she can play a lot of a lot of instruments. Oh really? What oh, does she yeah. play? She plays piano. She plays violin, and sometimes she'll play drums. They do have a drummer. Over there in the Peppers. She could fit right in. She fit right in. As and Doherty that just threw it away. There was no deflection. Just a turnover. The transfer from Maryland comes in and turns it over. As VCU's Jamil Watkins back in for the Rams, along with Nunn, Johns, Lawal, and Josh Banks. We'll see a lot of different lineups for Mike Rose in this game right. without Ace Baldwin in the lineup if you're just joining us. Exactly out, right. Out for tonight's game with a sprained wrist suffered against Jacksonville. Mike will always play 10 or 11 guys in the first half, but with Baldwin out, some other guys are going to get opportunities here. Elijah Hawk has found Harris down low and he missed his first shot of the game. He started four for four from the field. Down low to Lawal and last touch by Howard. By the way, speaking of not being perfect, which Harris now is not perfect, did you see the score of the San Francisco Tampa Bay game? It was 1 point 38 nothing, 38 49ers. Yeah, and that's with the uh, last pick in the draft facing Tom Brady. How Mr. About that? Irrelevant. Mr. Irrelevant. Ain't irrelevant anymore. Ain't absolutely. Out of bounds, last touch by Harris of Howard. They'll have 20 to shoot, speaking of VCU. And Elijah Hawkins, our player to watch for Howard in the game now. 
for the Bison. Second leading returning score from last year. Team's leading score this year at over 14 tonight. And again, only a sophomore. That's a pretty bright future at Howard. Here's Johns. Working against Harris with 10 to shoot. Strong move and will go to the line for a three-point play. Tim Clockerty let him play there, even though Johns was being bumped, and it worked out very well for the Rams. They're going to get Harris with the foul, but that's a big-time move by Brandon Johns Jr., muscling it down low against the 6'4 sophomore Bryce Harris. And they need a big game from him tonight with Ace Baldwin out. Career-high 20 points in the win Wednesday night. Lost Wednesday night. Oh, sorry, lost Sadly. Wednesday night. I was trying, trying to add that in there, sorry. Yeah. But the big thing that he did in that game was free throw shooting. He was 9 of 12 from the line, and at one point hit eight in a row for VCU. It completes the three-point play to give the Rams their largest lead at four. They've made four of their last five shots in the half. And I believe every one of those shots has been in the lane, unless I missed some. Dockery gives it inside to Odom. Nice head fake on the wall, and the wall bit and drew the foul. Yeah, and he, he got him with the body. Pretty good defense there. He blocked the shot, but definitely body contact. And the wall's not at his head. So, yep. The wall, the freshman from London, England, as we mentioned, a career high 10 points in the win, in the loss, rather, again, against Jacksonville. Keep saying win. Trying to change it in the record books. I don't think it's going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Jacksonville's a pretty good team, by the way. They you are. You saw the game Wednesday. But they're very experienced. They just missed the NCAAs by one game, lost in the final of the conference tournament last year. And I wouldn't be shocked if they were one of those March teams that could pull an upset. Nolan is a really good guard. Very good. In the, in the country. You will hear his name a lot in Atlantic Sun play. As by the way, I, both. I wonder how Laval is doing with England's loss yesterday. That's right. In the World Cup. In the World Cup. And I know he watched. Oh, I'm sure he watched. But that's an English tradition, losing in the quarterfinals. Under 10 to go in the first half. Yeah, that's a foul. No question. Jaden Nunn drew the foul on Shy Odom, the freshman from Chatsworth, California, at Sierra Cannon, Canyon High School. It's only the fourth team foul. I did ask Roger Ayers before the game started to please let them play. Since it's a Sunday night and we all have to work tomorrow. And Roger said, tis the Christmas spirit. What do you think so far? I think they're doing well so far. Eight like total this. fouls between the two teams. Eight fouls total, yeah. And four free throws between the two. This is just a good crew. They're not going to try to take the game over from the players. Nice positioning down low by Jaden DeLoach, who now has six. Four-point VCU lead. And a turnover forced by Jaden Nunn. Nice comeback for DeLoach, by the way. They had an undisclosed illness Wednesday. Did not play, but uh, saw him around, shoot around this afternoon, and he looked real good. Well, he's looked real good so far tonight, which is actually more important than shoot around. You know the famous Wilt Chamberlain shoot around story? What's that? So it was Bill Sharman who invented the shoot take game day shoot around when he was coaching the Lakers. And so he told everybody to be in the gym. Nice shot there. Dance again. He's working that baby hook. He really is. Maybe like Kareem. He's, he's got eight great so far. Position. But Sharman told his players to be there at 11 in the morning for shoot around. Now they got there, no Wilt Chamberlain. So he sent an assistant to call Wilt. And Wilt answered the phone and he said, You tell Coach Sharman I'm coming to the gym once today. It could be now or it could be for the game. I think Sharman opted for the game. I think so. Knocked out last by VCU. Howard will keep it with 10 to shoot. Fats Billups. His first name is Alfonso Billups, but he likes to be called Fats. Okay. The freshman from Verona High School here in Richmond in the lineup for VCU. Settled back in for Howard to replace Bryce Harris, who has nine points. He leads the way. See if they try for a lot to settle here, because he's a quick jumper. And they looked for it, but it wasn't there. It was well guarded. Five to shoot for the Bison. Here's Wood. To Odom, had it blocked in a violation. Yeah, that's a violation because the shot was blocked off the backboard. Good defense there. Well, Brent Holmes, the assistant for VCU, 
said today during shoot around, they have got to be much more active, and we can't allow Howard to have confidence. Now, early on, they did. They jumped out early, right. but right now, these two seems like they're getting that activity back up yeah. the way we are accustomed to seeing. Well, they've outscored them now, what, 18-6 to six since it was 10-4. Yeah. That, that's the kind of run Mike Rhodes wants to see. Howard, without a field goal in over three minutes, VCU has made their last three shots. Here's Nunn, had it partially blocked by Wood, and Howard now looking to run. Settle against Deloach. Deloach nice comes up with a goal 10. That was very, very close, but Roger Ayers calls a goal 10. Nice play there by Settle. Good shot fake. Got to the basket. Settle scores his first basket. And it's a four-point VCU lead as Toby LaWall comes back in to replace Deloach. He's looked really, really active on both ends. Speaking of Deloach, he'll leave with eight points and a couple of rebounds and a block. Very good. Along with two steals as well. What is it that Clark Kellogg used to say? Stuff in the stat book? Stat, stat sheet. sheet stuffer. Yep. Here's Billups off the hands of Shriver. Big fan of Clark Kellogg. One of the better people you'll ever meet. Time out on the floor, 7.56 to go at VCU, leading by four here at the Seagull Center. VCU right now with a four-point lead over Howard, 22-18. Sean Robertson along with John Feinstein, courtside here at the Stew. During the break, we just saw a fan hit a three-pointer from the top of the key, and I think everybody here at the Seagull Center will get Papa John pizza. You can have mine. I can have okay. You don't think your daughter would like the Papa John pizza? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. She likes Domino. Uh, Am I, is this bad because I'm talking I was gonna say, I about know. somebody who's not a sponsor? I think our folks upstairs may say, John, can't, shut can't, up. Can't mention the, the competitor. Yeah, sorry guys. Light full court pressure by VCU. I certainly don't want to upset Robbie Robinson. No, Khalil Robinson running the point for Howard. Tend to shoot now for the Bisons as Dixon has it against the wall. It looked like a walk, didn't it? It did. A lot of deflections now with one to shoot. Deflections. Here's Robinson gets it off and drills the three. That just kills you. And they will check that they're out. No, they're going to say it. a violation. Tim Cloggany said it is a shot clock violation, but so will Roger looks. Ayers check that out on the monitor? Yeah. They should check that out on the monitor. Boy, that was a bang, bang play close. in the corner. Yep. Cloggany had signaled shot clock violation. And so did Les Jones. Yeah. But Roger Ayers went to the scores table. Well, that's the right thing to do. And when it's that close. And looking at the replay, it looked like fingers may have still been on the basketball. Watch it again there, John. One second. It's really close. Yeah. But usually if the official's initial call is shot clock violation. And just like in the NFL, it has to be indisputable evidence to say whether or not. Yeah. The call on the, on the, on the floor tends to stand. Yeah. Kenny Blakely's looking at me and saying, well, what do you see? Like, very little as usual. Right Kenny played on two national championships. 91 and 92. And Roger Ayers confirmed Tim Cloggerty's call of a shot clock violation. That's that's a shame for Howard, but the flip side is when you play defense that well for 30 seconds, you don't want to have the possession end with a three. You feel like you've earned better than that. You mentioned those 91 and 92 national championship teams at Duke when Blakeney was there. Those were some strong teams. Yeah, they had some pretty good players. Just a few. Leitner, Bobby Hurley, Grant Hill, yeah. Brian Davis. And Thomas they rooted Hill. that 91 National Championship game. They pulled off that big upset against UNLV. In, in the semis. Yeah. It was in the semis, right. LaWall draws a foul. Yep. He's getting a little agitated down low. Feel like he was being hammered on multiple occasions on his move. I'll tell you what kind of a guy Roy Williams is. He was coaching Kansas at the time. They're introducing the teams for the national championship game. I've been elected president of the U.S. basketball writers that day. And I, I, all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, Roy's trying to get your attention. So I looked over, like, what's going on? What? And he goes, congratulations. And I was like, for what? <laughs> 
But that's Roy Williams. He's about to coach the national championship game, and he takes time to congratulate a friend on something. Class act. Class act is right. Lawal at the line. He was 4 of 10 this season before that miss, and he's got one more. Oh, miss sorry. both. You can see why he's 4 of 12. Settle up ahead to Dixon and off his hands. Good idea, poor execution. He saved it, but right to Lawal. You see he's got numbers here. Driver looking for that shot from behind the arc. He struggled from three this season. And that's what he does, is shoot the three. Shriver gets a clean look. Uh, and goes in. David Shriver. Good timing by you. That's only his 12th three-pointer made this season. 12 of 44 from behind the arc. Just under 26% from the line. And Jordan Wood comes right back. Wood likes to drive the basketball, doesn't he? Goes to his right a lot. Yep. Billups for three, halfway down and out. Jackson the rebound as Howard trails by five. Here's Williams poked away by Jackson. It'll stay with the Bison. But yeah, we are uh, knowing during an earlier broadcast you mentioned you saw Shriver at Hartford when yes. he was shooting over 40% from behind the arc. And it just seems like, you know, you say shoot around may not be a big deal, but just to shoot around, it looks calm, it looks relaxed. And then in the game, it just seemed like something is not there. But on that last attempt, it looked like the rhythm was there. The rhythm was certainly there. It was a good look. Uh, sometimes, you know, moving from Hartford to BCU, you're going up in terms of quality of play. And maybe he's struggling with, a little bit with the extra quickness. Ten to shoot for Settle and Howard. And we've got a out of bounds. Huh. I thought my, I thought, uh, Roger Ayers was indicating that Mike Rhodes had called timeout. Well, he got a warning. That's what I thought, but they said Elijah Hawkins stepped on the sideline in front of VCU's bench and another Howard turnover. They're 10th in the first half, VCU with five. So what's the warning for? I thought it was Trying a warning. Trying to make the call? Yeah. <laughs> well, he was maybe barking at Roger Ayers, and, but instead it was a out of bounds yep. to VCU. Usually that happens when someone's trying to shoot out of the line. Lose track of how close that out of bounds line is to the three point. Johns is back in for the Rams. Along with Delochu has it against Odo. Swings it to Nunn, a step back three. Shane Nunn, who shoots almost 35% from three, gives VCU. Their largest lead at eight. Usually and the Loach comes up with a steal. Yeah, that was a bad pass. And we've got a foul on the floor. And now the Loach is on the floor, on the baseline, in pain, and holding his left knee. Mike Rose and Coach Scott walking Please. right over there to the baseline to check on the Loach. This gets very quiet when somebody goes down like that because it could be absolutely nothing or it could be serious. You just don't know. The way he grabbed his left knee and how he is grimacing. It's not a good sign. On the baseline does not look good. Now remember, they are already without Ace Baldwin, who was sitting on the VCU sideline with his sprained wrist that he suffered against Jacksonville. And right now, the trainer for VCU is attending to Jalen Deloach trying to, trying to stretch, stretch out, out that yeah. knee. See how it feels. He's trying to make a move against Steve Settle the third, and I don't know if he planned it wrong or. Or you, you, they without the replay, knees, yeah. they could have banged knees. He could have stepped on a foot. But as he grabbed his left knee, let's see if he puts any weight on it. I'm not optimistic. Coach Scott is signaling to a couple of players. Yeah, they're asking for extra help. Yeah. I think this is Okafor, uh, one of the redshirt players for VCU, who will help them out. Although the biggest guy in the building is Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is not a good sign right there. Hopefully it might be it's just a hyperextension, maybe. We'll hold out hope. Well, he, is putting out, he is putting a little weight on yeah. that left knee. That's a good sign, not holding it up in the air. 
So now VCU will be down two starters for an extended period of time. Ball went out, and Deloach looks like may not return. Hopefully he does, but may not return. No way to know. Kenny Blakeney, by the way, was leading the applause. Class act. No surprise to me, since I've known him since high school. And Deloach is going right down the tunnel yeah. to the VCU locker room. take him into training room yeah. and take a better look at it. And hopefully we'll get hopefully an update at halftime or during the second half on the status of Jude Deloach, but uh, he may not return tonight. So Toby Lawal will come back in for VCU with five minutes to go in the first half and the Rams leading by eight. There's nothing good about injuries, but VCU is a deep team. They play a lot of guys. Rams commits their sixth turnover. Inside is Odom. Johns got Foul. stripped and fouled by Odom. I think that's going to be the seventh on Howard, so it should be one and one. Jameer Watkins comes back in to replace Kern. It, it is a, I guess, a bonus for head coach Mike Rose. It's the fact, as you mentioned, John, they are deep. They can play between 10 and 12 guys yeah. at any given game. And Christian Furman is still on the bench for BC, another big for and Coach Rose. And you're not asking guys to come in who haven't been in games. They've all been in games. Maybe the rules are going to be different because of the injuries, but they've all played. So Brandon Johns at the line. Makes a second in a row. As I mentioned, 20 points against Jacksonville on 9 of 12 shooting from the stripe, almost 81% from the line this season. And as you said, having a big guy who can make free throws is such a bonus. Another make. VCU came in at 69.5% this season from That's the line. That's not good enough, but you want to be closer to 75. Howard breaks the press. Good defense by Lawal, but back to Settle against Jackson. Nice move by Settle and Lawal. Okay. It's called for goaltender. He's showing off his 45-inch vertical leap on that play. I was say that was very exciting, but it was goaltending. He has the highest vertical leap on the team. And he showed it there on that goal team. Look how high he gets up. His late, head though. was almost at the rim. A little late. 30 to 22, VCU by eight, and Watkins couldn't control it out of bounds. That was one where the, the passer was guilty of the turnover. Red Auerbach used to tell Bob Cozy, I don't care how you pass the ball. Behind your back, behind your head, between your legs. But if the ball doesn't get to the guy you're throwing it to, it's your turnover. Seven turnovers for the Rams, oh, nice and now play. Howard committed their 12. Here is Johns down court against Odom and scores. And those are the kind of turnovers that Howard simply can't afford. They have a chance to cut it to six or even five, and instead it goes quickly back to ten. Here's Hawkins down low, and he got fouled. Mike Rose is upset about that call as we come up on our last media timeout. Hawkins will shoot free throws when we come back, and VCU leads by 10. There's a look at the VCU huddle, as they currently lead by 10, 32-22. You're just joining us, Sean Robertson, along with John Feist. The ace ball went out for tonight's game with a sprained wrist, and a couple of minutes ago, Jalen Deloach left the game as with an injured knee, it appeared, on a play. It was an injured knee. The question is how serious it was. I think, you know, Jaden Deloach's injury obviously sobers things, but I feel like Mike Rhodes' uh, Come to Jesus meeting got through on Friday. It feels like they're a lot sharper. He took, a lot of the, floor. he took a lot of accountability after the loss to Jacksonville. Especially he always after, does. Yeah, especially after the, during the presser. He said, the owner starts with me. It starts with me. I got to take a look at myself, a hard look at myself. And he, and said, get it done. he said, he said to his players, I have not been coaching you hard enough. I, I need to be, I need to be more honest with you about your mistakes rather than just say, well, I, I won't give anybody a hard time and hope things get better. There's Kenny Blakeney, the Howard head coach, talking to Jelani Williams. Elijah Hawkins at the line made the first. 77% shooter on the year, makes both as Williams comes in. We weren't sure if Jelani Williams was going to be able to play tonight. He was sick for most of the week, didn't practice. 
Now, you mentioned the great story for Steve Settle. How about the story for Jelani Williams, the transfer from Penn, who tore his ACL. Missed two years. He tore his left one in 2016, tore his right ACL twice, and missed three full seasons, yeah. counting the COVID year. Here's Zeb Jackson. That's right, because Penn did not play during the COVID year. Nobody in the Ivy League played during the COVID year. He missed so. three full seasons and played last year with no, you know, no fifth year of right. eligibility in the Ivy League. He transferred. He to played Howard. last year as an academic senior who had never played a college basketball game before the season started. Steve Donahue had a bunch of juniors and seniors like that because of COVID, because of injuries. Zeb Jackson misses the first. He's 83% from the line this year. As Miles Stewart, the redshirt freshman from Orlando, replaces Dixon, the transfer from Cornell. Cornell and Penn, if you're going to take graduate students, they're not bad places to take them from. Jackson missed both. He was a team captain, speaking of Dixon, last season. Cornell's off to a great start this year. I think they're 9 and 2. They lost at Miami 107 105. The shootout down the Coral Gables. You're kidding. Settle now has it against Watkins, turns around and shot an air ball. Yeah, that's a tough shot. Not squared up. Here's Jackson. Over to Johns, off his foot. A lot of Kept contact it alive there. And found Schreiber to reset. No reset of the shot clock. Watkins goes to the rim and scores again. Yeah, he got a nice screen there. You know, nice down screen from Johns to get to the rim. Jamil Watkins, who was held scoreless against Jacksonville, now has four. And VCU leading again by 10. Wood, the ball fake, is short on the three. And he thought that one was in. Offensive rebound by Stewart, got his own miss and scores. That's something Mike Rhodes won't like. It's one thing to, to give up an offensive rebound, it's another thing to give up a second offensive rebound. Stewart averaging over three rebounds a night for Howard. Lead is down to eight for VCU, All under two and a half to go. They called that a flop on Miles Stewart. Tim Clogarty motioned the flop, and that's a tech and one free throw coming for VCU. Yeah. We haven't seen that called very often, but it does happen. Happens more than it's called. It's only a one free throw tech, and David Shriver will shoot the tech for VCU. Shriver shooting 67% from the line this year. I was just going to say, I don't, I'm not sure who else is on the court. But I'm not sure I'd send a guy shooting 67% to the line. Well, John is clearly over 81%. Yeah. And you had none. He may About be trying 66. to help Shriver with his confidence. Might be. Josh Banks is at 86% on the year. Watkins at 61 and a half. But like you said, man, see another shot fall. What helped his confidence is Johns retrieved the inbound. Beautiful bounce pass inside to Shriver and he can't convert. Oof. Shaking his head coming down court. That was a good look there by Johns as we're coming up on two minutes to go in the half. VCU up by eight. Johnson's played a terrific all-around floor game tonight. And he comes up with the block there. Like I said. Knocked it. away by Howard. And VCU will get it back. Nice deflection there that breaks up the fast break. That's why deflections are important. You've got to reset your offense. O.C. Okoje in for Howard, wearing number 11, the freshman from out of Brampton, Canada, played for the United Scholarship Academy in Toronto. Here is Johns, nice and move. one. Nice move, Johns is doing exactly what BCU needs him to do tonight, which is to basically be the best player. 11 so far for Brandon Johns, and he had his way right there against Miles Stewart. Just using those long arms, getting fouled. Double-digit lead for the first time tonight. Well, one thing about Brandon Johns, as Mike Rose mentioned earlier this season, 
He can score at the rim and put the ball on the floor. And he showed that on that last trip. Sure did. Johns has a dozen to lead all scores. VCU leading by 11. Inside 90 seconds and a partial block there by David Shriver. Yeah, nice defense there by Shriver coming to help. And VCU will set. Settle comes up with the steal against Watkins ahead and slams it home. That's where the long arms come in. Settle. Got the steal and the basket to pull Howard within nine. And he's 6'9", but he still has the athletic skills of a, a smaller guy. I was going to say, he has the moves of a guard. Yeah. Like a big guard. Because yeah, he, he was a guard for much of his career. Another turnover. He's settled again. He lost control. Maybe that was a back pass like in hockey. Wood for three. Five in a row scored by Howard. And a technical foul called by Tim Clarkety on Wood as he said something to Mike Rhodes as he ran down court. Well, that's not very smart, taunting the other coach. And Tim Clarkety was right on it. We'll watch it again. He got it back right in front of VCU's bench, hits the three, and then he said something. Yeah, he did say something. And like you said, Tim Clockerty was right there. And basically said, young man, you don't do that. Just play. So that's his second foul on the tech. And now Brandon Johns will go to the line to shoot those free throws. And Kenny Blakeney will say a word or two to Jordan Wood. He's a 40% three-point shooter. He's got eight so far in the game, two from three-point land. And Johns remains perfect from the strike. He's averaging 11.9 points per game this season, so he's eclipsed his season average here in the first half. And now has 14. He may surpass his career high in tonight's game. Well, more important than that, though, Sean, is he's played such a terrific all-round game. Yeah, I would agree with that. Defensively passing the ball, screening. Just being the leader out there, which they need him to be. Roger Ayers confirmed the tech on Jordan Wood, trash talking in front of VCU's bench. That's pretty simple. Jaws has 14 points in 14 minutes here in the half. Schreiber got away with a walk and look like and I dropped it in. away with two walks. Kenny Blakey didn't like that at all. Oh, he did. Schreiber has five, and it's a 10-point lead again for VCU. We're inside 20 seconds. Here's Wood over Schreiber. Too strong. Banks the rebound, and VCU can hold it for one. Plenty of time here. No need to rush. Here's Nunn looking at it with five. Johns for three. And that's the first half will end. There. Johns couldn't end what was pretty close to a perfect half. John's leading the way with 14 points in the first half. Short Wood has eight, and Bryce Harris with nine. And VCU leading by 10 at the break. We'll have our halftime activities from the Single Center right after this. Second half here at the Single Center with VCU leading Howard 41 31. John Robertson along with John Feinstein. All right, Howard started off strong, got off yeah. to a fast start, but then VCU kind of showed their defensive prowess and turned this game around. If you're Coach Blakeney, what are you, what are you telling your team? you got to take better care of the basketball. It's that simple. You can't. They get going. You know, sometimes when you're being pressed by a team, you get going too fast. And I'm not even talking about necessarily taking a quick shot. I'm talking about going too fast and putting yourself in position to turn the ball over. They, they can't do that. They had 12 turnovers in the first half. You don't win any game with 24 turnovers. And a great sign for VCU is Jake DeLoach. You just saw him in your picture yeah. on that last shot. We thought it was going to be the worst with that knee injury, but he is back. And I starting. guess it might have been a hyperextension, but he is back. Limping a little, yeah. but I think he's going to be okay. And he'll start the second half with Johns, Jackson, Watkins, and Don, the starting foul for VCU. Howard will have Jelani Williams, who will live down there right in front of us, along with Bryce Harris, Steve Settle the third, Kobe Dixon, and also Jordan Wood. And Howard needs to do a better job of running offense, reversing the basketball, and getting into position to get a good shot. 
That's easy to say, right? Easy to say. It's like to when do. you're a pitching coach and you say, "Throw him low and at the knees." Well, if you throw him low and at the knees, you need, he'll be he'll be in the Hall of Fame. I stole that line from Chip Bowden. <laughs> ball four. I thought that was yours. I wish Your I was that smart. One. I learned so much from that book. Wow. Jelani Williams at the line, scoreless so far in the game, and stays that way as he came in averaging just over nine points tonight. We mentioned part of his story in the first half has had three different ACL tears. Right. 2016, he tore his left one in high school. 2018 and 19, tore his right ACL. In 16, he tore that left ACL in high school yep. and recovered in 2017 and missed the entire year at Penn. They missed three full seasons. Yeah, because there was also a COVID season when the Ivy League didn't play. That looked like a foul. And Watkins muscles it in as he's getting back on track with six in the game. Lead back to 11. After being scoreless on Wednesday night. Bryce Harris, we mentioned, hit his first four shots it's in the first half. Critical time in the game for Howard. They, they, they've got a score. Here's Williams. Get blown out. Rebound to Johns. Third rebound for him. Here's Jackson on the move. Nice look inside to Deloach. And wow. it spilled off. Oh, great pass by Johns there. Great interior passing. Just underway here in the second half. VCU with an 11 point lead. Steve settled the third. Tough Just shot there, the shot but up. It went in. I think he's got a chance to be a real good player because he's more athletic than. And, uh, I hope Mike Krzyzewski's not watching this game because Howard's in the zone now. 2-3 zone. First time I think they've shown that tonight. None. Extra pass to Watkins. Then goes up strong and draws a foul. Krzyzewski did play some zone in his career. Unlike his mentor. Bobby Knight. Coach Knight. Zim Jackson is grimacing a little bit like he got hit in a sensitive area. Yeah, he is. And Watkins is hobbling a little bit too. Man, the wounded for VCU. Jackson is out. Replaced by Josh Banks. And Zim Jackson has taken a seat right near the VCU bench. So Watkins is grimacing. Jackson is grimacing and in pain a little bit. I mentioned that Deloach. That's Jones. Uh, this is a good ref. He went and checked with Watkins, who was clearly sore. Didn't want to come out, so he goes, oh, we got to dry the basketball off right now. He gave a little wink to Roger Ayers on that, too. Yeah. Well, the refs know what, what they're doing, what each other's doing. And we know the story for Jameer Watkins missed all of last season as he tore his ACL in September. Missed all of the 2021-22 season. Started off strong, coming back this year, now averaging a little over nine points a game for VCU. Second one spilled off. He's got six so far in the game. And VCU up by 10. Let's give Jay Nunn a nod, too. He's done a really good job defensively playing the point tonight. Good defense by VCU. Steve Settle for three. That was a little bit too far outside. He was standing next to his coach. Johns with good hustle. Up ahead to Banks. Going up against Williams. Big time move by Josh Banks, who now has five, and the lead is at a dozen for VCU. Poked Another away turnover. by Johns. It's the kind of turnover you can't afford because it's live ball. VCU has a chance, although Howard does a good job of getting back. Settling back into that zone. Nunn running the point tonight with Ace Baldwin on the bench. Missing tonight's game with a sprained wrist. Watkins for three. Just grazed the side of the rim. That, that was uh, one of those quick shots without moving the ball that Mike Rhodes wants to cure his team of. Miles Stewart misses the layup, and Watkins... Good hustle, but he didn't quite get to it. Went on the baseline, and David Shriver will come in for VCU to replace Johns. Howard will keep possession with 20 on the shot clock. Nick Kern also in. Swear as well God, as Johns is hobbling too. 
It's like a disease over there on that bench. Now, the last game we did together, Johns and Shriver both remember both had injured foot. Yeah. Injured their foot. Johns is looking at his foot, but I think it might just be the sneaker. Might be. And Shriver, remember, after he made a three, he stepped on somebody's ankle on the bench. And didn't play. They didn't play the, the rest of the game, right? Bryce Harris back in, and Jalen Deloach comes up with the steal. Losing control, getting it back, and he stepped on the baseline. That's a shame for him. Good steal. Again, another turnover for Howard. Third steal by Jalen Deloach tonight. 14 turnovers for Howard, 10 now for VCU. Combined 24 in tonight's game. Three minutes gone by in the first half, in second half rather. Howard by 12. Howard trailing by 12, now 10 as Jordan Wood scores his 10 point. Jordan Wood's another one who I think has a chance to be a pretty good player. Hawkins comes up with the loose ball. Got fouled, no whistle, and Steve Settle scores for Howard to get it to within eight. I think this Howard team really has a chance to be competitive in the end. They were last year. Eight-point lead now for Howard. Eight-point lead for VCU, rather. Banks in the corner. Another quick shot. Settle the rebound for Howard. They can get it to within six or five. They score here, we might see a timeout. Tough but shot by Settle. Did. Yeah, it's good defense. Got a foul on Miles Stewart. Mike, Mike Rhodes out on the court. Telling his players to play smarter. So much easier said than done. I would venture to say he likes the energy that the team is giving yes. tonight. Yes. But, but they, like you said, they were... They got the double-digit lead, and they started settling for quick shots. He doesn't want to see that at all. So VCU will have Shriver, Nunn, Jackson, Luol, and Kern on the floor, staring at a 2-3 zone set up by Howard. Settle, Hawkins, Wood, Odom, and Stewart on the floor for the Bison. Shriver had a good look for three, couldn't convert. Well, never touch the paint. When you're facing a zone, that's when you really miss Ace Baldwin. Because he can get in the lane against any defense. Odom to Wood, the extra pass around. Settle left open for three. That was good ball movement. It's Every just, player touched the ball yep. on that last trip, and Howard is within five. And Mike wants timeout. No shock to this reporter. 15-28 to go in the game, and Howard down by five to VCU. By the way, I am not, I'm one of the few humans, I don't like cheese on my steaks. Really? I like a Charlie's non-cheese steak. Is there such a thing? I don't know. Philadelphia, though, they usually let you make your own, so you can get, you know, a Philly cheese steak without cheese. Without cheese. <laughs> They're so good. So it's a Philly steak? Yeah, it's a Philly okay. steak. We also want to mention that our halftime stats were provided by the VCU Virginia Credit Union, home of the VCU Black and Gold MasterCard. VCU for VCU. Yep. David Schreiber at the high post. It's an active zone for a nice team that pass. doesn't play zone. And Zim Jackson draws a foul. Comes up to the under 16 timeout. And VCU leads by five. Synergy Technical is proud to sponsor tonight's game and will donate to SOAR 365 for every point that the Rams score tonight. Right now they have 46 and currently lead by five. Over Howard, Sean Robertson along with John Feinstein and our entire Ram Unlimited crew here at the Siegel Center. This game has kind of gone back and forth, John. It was and Howard here. early, VCU pulled away, and yeah. Howard coming right back on a 7-0 run. I really thought VCU was about to pull away, but Howard went to that zone and really affected their, their offense, probably because VCU didn't expect to see much zone from Howard. And then VCU started quick shooting again, just exactly what Mike Rhodes was talking about the last couple days. Jackson makes his first free throw of the night, one of four from the stripe. 
VCU 9 of 16 as they lead by six. Settle thought about shooting it over Johns. I think Settle always thinks about shooting. Here's Odom over Schreiber, and he'll get two free throws. Settle's got 13 points, nine rebounds, and zero assists. 13 points on 13 shots. And at the line is Shy Odom. Sierra Canyon High School. The name is, the high school is very familiar across the country. Certain top NBA players, yeah. son, played at Sierra Canyon. It's true. And we're talking about LeBron. His son is at Bronny. Sierra Canyon. Bronny is at Sierra Bronny. Canyon. I saw an interesting story on LeBron James Jr. the other day. It said he's a four-star player, but a five-star celebrity. And that's tough to deal with. No question. You know? No question. Well, how come you're not as good as your dad? Well, because nobody's as good as my dad. Oh, Michael, no, Michael both. Jordan's sons both had I to I was going to say, that. yeah. They never really panned out. Nope. Jackson for three. John's the offensive rebound. Here's Jackson. Nice pass to Kern around the horn to Shriver. Good look nice, to John. Nice movement. Give Shriver a big nod on that. He's a three point shooter. Defense came out on him. He shot fake, got by, and set up a dunk. Good Passed play. up the good three for a better two. Yep. So Dean Smith always used to say one more pass usually leads to a better shot. John's with 16 points on the night in 18 minutes. They're up by six. Hawkins to Odom, and a reach in by Nunn. That is uh, the team's third foul. Both teams with three fouls here in the second half. Some, some fan just asked Roger Ayers how much they're paying him. About 2,000 tonight. He's in that top tier. He is in that top tier. Now, if he's officials. working an ACC game tonight, he'd be making 2,500. Plus expenses. Plus expenses. Elijah Hawkins will inbound for Howard as they trail by six. Settle against Jackson. Ten to shoot for the Bison. Settle left open for three. Ring it up. That. He can definitely make that. He's proven it already. He Mike's only came in shooting 26.5% from three. He's got 16 on the night and two of four from behind the arc. They're within three. He's got a good looking stroke, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. VCU looking again at that 2-3 zone. Shriver would try to shoot out of it halfway down. And Wood, the rebound for Howard, who can tie it with a three. Hard to believe, isn't it? 46-34 just a minute ago. Wood thought about it against Johns. Settle has it against Shriver. Shot clock is at 10 and under 10 for Howard. They are letting the kids play, aren't they? Yes, Very they physical. are. Out of bounds. He's going to go back to VCU, and it would have been a shot clock violation anyway. Les Robbins. Uh, Les Robbins. Uh, Les Jones. Yeah, that's a former NC State coach. Yeah. And Citadel coach. Yeah. Um, Les Jones pointing to his stomach many times. I don't know if that was a call or if he just wants to make sure people know he's lost about 30 pounds. Looks pretty good. It looks it? great. It looks great. But he was saying that it went off the uh, chest and the stomach. Oh, I know what he was saying, but I'd like well, to see that. <laughs> Gotta mention that to those watching. Yeah. Inside the Jalen Deloach who just checked in and got hammered by yep. Stewart and Odom. And the only question is, who do they call the foul on? Because he was fouled by both guys. Odom got called for the foul. His third, team's fourth. One thing about VCU tonight, they are making the extra pass in the paint. And they're doing a much better job with their interior passing than they did on Wednesday night. Deloach with eight so far in the game. First attempts from the strike, and he looked good there. 59.5% from the stripe for Jalen this year. The sophomore from Savannah. You say he looked a lot better there than 59%. Nice stroke. Career high 16 scored against 
Temple a couple of Saturdays ago. <laughs> I but totally he got his own rebound. I totally jinxed that. That's the game. analyst jinx. That was not yes. the play-by-play -play jinx. That was the analyst jinx. It's almost an air ball. Under 10 to shoot for VCU. Here's none against Settle. The extra pass. Shot clock is down to one. Watkins. Nope. Shot clock violation. Nope. We've had several of those today. Both, both ends. And I think some, some of that is a tribute to the defense. Both teams are playing. Now, again, I've said this to you before. I hate the rule where you get an offensive rebound and the clock goes to 20, not 30. I think if you get an offensive rebound, you've earned another possession, not two-thirds of another possession. It's a bad rule. It's designed to put more scoring into the game. The game's fine. Typical NCAA to overthink things. Howard down by four as Dockery. Dockery back in for Howard. Under 10 to shoot. Here's Odom. Pass deflected by Schreiber. It'll stay with Howard with four to shoot. And that brings us to the under 12 media timeout. VCU holding on to a four-point lead over Howard here at the Siegel Center. Taking a look at the Virginia Credited Union assist of the game from David Schreiber. Yeah, really nice pass there. And again, that's where the threat of an outside shooter helps set up the offense. Because Schreiber, as you see, his shot makes. They have to respect it. He gets by two defenders. And then a perfect pass for a shot. I would say a shot that I could hit. The problem is I can't dunk. I could dunk the girls' basketball when I was in high school. Oh, you could? You could. I could jump, but my hands were too small. Odom got fouled with one second on the shot clock, and it'll be against Jalen Deloach. Big Every throw. VCU credit, VCU assist, the Virginia Credit Union makes a donation to the Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. Mike Rose just aged about six months on that play. That's the worst foul to, to oh, burn there with one on the goodness. shot clock. And Shy Odom back at the line for two. He's got five points all from the strike tonight. And Howard, again, hanging around. They're within three, 50 to 47. And that's because VCU has made one of their last seven field goals. Have not made a field goal in nearly three minutes. On the, their last field goal was that uh, uh, VCU uh, pass of the game, assist of the game. Brandon Johns back in. Six rebounds for him tonight. Much extra quieter pass to Banks. Josh Banks. You called it exactly right. Where did that pass come from? Okay, the, from paint. the paint. Another Virginia Credit Union assist for the Rams, who are back up by six. Banks now has eight. He was a pretty good scorer in high school. He was averaging over 24 points in high school at Charlotte. Five to shoot for Howard. Settle has it against Johns. Throws one up and had it blocked. And then we have another shot clock violation. That's why he had to throw it up. Normally, I, I would say Settle would, would rather stand on his head than pass the ball, but he had no choice at that point. Great defense again by VCU. That's at least the third shot clock violation they forced. And there have been some others where they had to force bad shots. The Loach got fouled on his way to the cup. And that might be Odom again. It is, and that is his fourth. He becomes the first player in the danger zone tonight with four fouls. The Loach got hit in the face. Yep. But again, from high post to low post on that pass from Johns yep. to DeLoach. Loach has had a tough night physically. Yeah, he has. But he is a gamer. He uh, Earlier in the game, in the first half, looked like he planted his left knee wrong, and it buckled. And we thought the worst as they sent him I off really, the court. I really was concerned. Yeah, sent him off the injury. court into the locker room, but he is back in the game, playing well, and hits his first free throw. With one eye. Uh, during the warm-ups at halftime, Mike Rhodes came out and said to him, are you okay? Are you good to go? And he said, yep, and he started it. 
Second game of a six-game homestand for VCU tonight. They're back in action Wednesday night when they take on Radford here at the Siegel Center. Which is a, sol no, a solid team. Yeah. Two, two made free throws by Jalen Deloach, who's now in double figures with 10. Second Ram in that category with Johns, who has 16 to lead all scores. Whoops, just lost it. Oh, no, it got, it got deflected by none. None, as I said, has been really doing a good job with on-the-ball defense and playing the ball. Radford beat George Washington a week ago. And I asked Chris Caputo after that game, I said, what did you learn down there? He said, I learned I'm never going back to Radford, Virginia. That wasn't nice. I don't think it was anything against the town. Wood misses on the three. Fans thought he traveled as he picked up the second foot. But here's Johns attacking the rim against Wood. Tip is good. It's either Watkins or Deloach. I think it was Watkins. They give it to Watkins now with eight. And a kick ball by Banks. And it'll stay with Howard. And Coach Blakeney thought that was a travel. Again, I say this about coaches often. He wanted it to be a travel. He wanted it. Lead back to 10. The 7-0 run for VCU in the last 90 seconds. You can always get what you want, right? Howard without a made field goal in almost four minutes. I think after that timeout. Mike, Williams breaks that drought. Players were kind of instructed they better play defense. Jelani Williams from downtown. Is that his first field goal? His first field goal of the night. Yeah. Howard within seven. Coming up on nine and a half minutes in the game. Shot clock coming up on 10 for none in the offense. Here's Watkins. That's good defense. And out of bounds to VCU with six to shoot. And I like the ball movement there, but you got to give Howard credit. I poke Dean Smith often, I know, but Dean Smith used to always say, the other team gives scholarships too. So Deloach will come out, Shriver in. And Steve settled back in for Howard to replace Elijah Hawkins. Hawkins has had a very quiet night tonight. Two points. Yeah. Came nice in averaging, averaging over 14. 14. Here's Johns with two to shoot. Poked away by Bryce Harris. And Howard again forces a turnover. That's now 13 turnovers for VCU in the game. Get Mike Rose something to discuss with his guys tomorrow. Here's Wood. The jump hook Oof. gets the friendly roll. Several friendly rolls. Jordan Wood has a dozen and he, is back down to five. He also has no assists. Not a passer either. No, he's not. Banks for three. Ring it up. There's a good ball reversal there, setting up an open shot. Josh Banks has a new career high with 11. Ball reversal is such an underrated skill, Sean. It looks like, oh, it's just a pass. Changes the entire offensive set. And you do it right. Good Shots hands. with good hands. He's played really good defense tonight. He's played really good basketball tonight, both ends of the floor. Here's Settle for three. Popped in, popped out, and teased all of the rim. Well, that time, that time the four, four rim, rim rolls did not work out for the shooter. It was last touch by VCU. Howard will keep possession. Josh Banks out. He's played big minutes tonight for VCU, resulting in a career high, a new career high with 11. That's what you need when you get guys injured. You need help from the bench. And you know, Bryce nice Harris. Pass. Finishes strong for Howard. His and that was a pass point. from Settle. How about that assist? So stop the game. Settle comes in averaging almost two assists a night this year. His first of the game. Shriver from distance. Ring it up. Somehow you could tell that he was dialed in on that shot. I, I, I don't know if it was released. I knew it was going in. Sometimes you get that feeling from the shooter. First time in a long time he has made multiple threes in one game at VCU. Two of five from behind the arc tonight. 
Johns poked that away. Wood got it back. Long three that goes over the backboard. If you're going to take that shot, that, it better go in. That brings us to the under eight media timeout. VCU back in front by nine. Coming up after the break, more basketball from the series of the upcoming VCU men's basketball schedule on Mass Action Men and Women's basketball schedule. The women will be in action December 12th as they host Gardner Webb. All these games will be on Mass. The men will be playing on Wednesday as they will host Bradford, followed by a Saturday night tilt against Northern Illinois. And then uh, I think you and I are back for the December 21st game against Navy. Navy, yeah. And then the women will host Howard, the Lady Bison, at 6 p.m. here at the Seagull Center. All of those games can be seen on Masson. So I hope you'll be able to join us for the next five women and men's basketball games for VCU. Here, the Rams lead by nine over Howard. Zeb Jackson back in for VCU with Dunn, Watkins, Shriver, and DeLoach. VCU has five to shoot. Jackson goes glass. Oh, that was a Can't nice finish. move. Couldn't finish. He had space. Howard now plus six on the glass tonight, 29 to 23. And last touch by the Rams. Howard will keep it with 16 to shoot. The turnovers have gotten closer. 16 Howard, 13 VCU. Mike Rhodes likes the 16 number. He doesn't like the 13. But also, within those turnovers, the deflections that VCU has had that, in the game. That are very underrated as a stat. And a block by Nunn on Settle. Nunn 6-3. Settle 6-9. But advantage none on the block. No doubt. Oh. Wood with a bad pass. Poor pass, great save. And save it to DeLoach. And another turnover. Up ahead to Jackson. Ooh, he took some nasty fall. He sure did. Looked like he hit his tailbone, and Roger Ayers immediately signaled intentional. Yeah. And so did Les Jones, an intentional foul. And, and they're going to go to the monitor to see if this rates a DQ. Let's watch Thanks. it again. It started with the steal by DeLoach. And then Jackson. It looked like he, he it looked like he got caught up on the on the backboard and, and lost his balance. That looked like Miles Stewart. Yeah, he bumped him. Well, the problem is he didn't make a play for the ball. That's why it was called attention. And Roger Ayers immediately came into the play and signaled intentional foul. Yeah, and, and clearly there was no intent to injure there. So I think this will be two points in the ball, two shots in the ball, excuse me. Roger Ayers and Tim Clockety over at the scores table checking out the replay. Kenny Blakeney wants to know more, and Les Jones says, we'll tell you when we're ready. Dangerous play on that trip, but looks like Zeb is okay. He's standing up. I think you're right that he just landed in a bad spot. Yeah. Actually, a good spot because there's a lot of flesh there. Landed on the tailbone. And he's in the huddle with uh, his teammates, Shriver, Watkins, DeLoach, and Nunn, speaking with head coach Mike Rhodes and J Jamal Brennan, as we talked about at the beginning, throughout his uh, travels as coach. Coach Rose started at Randolph Bacon up the road in Ashland. And Jamal it's alma mater. Was, yeah. He's and, an All American there. And Jamal Brunt was a player on Rose's first few teams there. Right. Tim Clockerty is going to tell us what let happened. John Feinstein know the situation. So we thought it was a flagrant one, which initially we thought that was the case. Uh, but uh, Tim Clockery said something different. He said flagrant two because they, they believed there was a chance for injury. And a flagrant two is an automatic ejection. Yep. So Miles Stewart leaves the game on this play against Zeb Jackson. And again, his problem was, because I don't think he intended to injure, but his problem was he never went for the basketball. And if you go for the basketball, then you don't go for the basketball, then it's going to be a flagrant of some kind. And they decided to make it a flagrant, too. 
So now Les Jones and Roger Ayers will talk about something. I think everything is in order. So now it went to a flagrant two. I keep to wondering where the pizza is. We'll get it for you before you go back. Oh, no. I'm fine. <laughs> I, 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 I ceded mine to you. Okay. And Zeb Jackson continues his struggles from the free throw line. One of five tonight. Nick Rhodes is saying, concentrate, concentrate. The transfer from Michigan, part of that 2021 Elite 18 with Jawan Howard. He makes one of two. So they get at least one point, could get maybe three or four on this trip as they're back up by 10. Remember, it was down to three. Down to three, and Howard had the ball. Yeah, that was back to 10 for Deloach in the offense. Here's Shriver. Good pass, good catch. Very underrated skill in basketball is catching the ball. And There's another a, turnover. Another turnover. Number 18 on the night. And Howard's I think, starting to get flustered here. And I think the, the confidence is back for Davis Shriver. He had really been in a shooting slump. He was two of his last 26 in his last five games. Shriver now in double figures with 10, four of eight from the field, two of five from three. Howard's still in the zone, but when you're down 12 with six minutes to go, I'm not sure you can stay in it. Although it's been a pretty effective defense for him. That's Settled. going up. And that was too strong, an offensive rebound for Bryce Harris, who's back in for Howard along with Jordan Wood. Bryce Harris played a nice game. Harris and Wood have combined for 23 for Coach Blakeney and Howard. No good pass there. And Odom draws a foul. They're going to count the basket. No, less. No, it Jones was, will it say was it's definitely on the, floor. on the floor. And guess what? It's not even a shooting foul. Deloach is going to get the foul. Les Jones saying no, it is a non shooting foul. That's a college rule I don't like. Because that was it, the NBA. That's yeah, continuation. That's continuation. And I don't like a rule that penalizes someone for getting fouled. And that's what happens. So instead of a possible three-point play, it's, a, it's an, an inbound. inbound for Howard and a fresh 20 as opposed to the 30 that you were talking they about. You don't even get the full 30, right. Jelani Williams back in for Howard, 10 to shoot for the Bison. Boy, there have been some wild shots put up by Howard. Some of it's the defense, some of it's wild shots. Here's Jackson who got bumped on the way up. And they're going to say out of bounds to Howard. That was, that was very good defense there by Wood. Got back, got good position, did not foul. I can hear Mike Rose telling Zeb, pass the ball. He had Brandon Johns on his left, the two Michigan transfers. Passing the ball has been a key to VCU's success tonight. When they run good offense, it's because they pass the ball nicely. Here comes the trap in the backcourt. They just got it over, and, and a turnover. The only good thing about that turnover for Howard is that the ball went out of bounds, so they can set their defense. VCU in the midst of a 6-0 run over the last two and a half minutes as we are at money time here in the second half. Under and when does money go. time click in? Under five? Under five. Okay. That's when the coaches earn their money. <laughs> or don't. Or don't, depending on the situation. Right. Here's Watkins, partially blocked by Harris. Johns had his shot blocked by Odom. Odom also got the steal on that possession as well. Howard's got active hands. You got to give him that credit for that. And even down by 12, they're still in this game. Here's Harris. Tough move against Deloach. As I said, he's really played a nice game. 13 for Bryce Harris, more than doubled his season average. He came in averaging just under seven. And Howard within 10. Coming up on four minutes to go in the game. Here's none, just four points tonight for VCU. More active hands. And Williams comes up with the loose ball. He does not have numbers. And here's seven. Oh, oh with the slam. He, he created numbers. A number. One on zero. Nice move. He is athletic, isn't he? Yes, he is. And he's at the top of that 2-3 zone with now 18 and is back down to eight. Like you said, Howard has not gone away. And good hands again. Yet another deflection. And Watkins uh, was almost there. Oh, that in. was a foul. And Deloach, Deloach over, the back. over the back. 
It comes up with our last media timeout at the end of four mark. Howard and VCU and a good one with the Rams up by eight. Always a great atmosphere here at the Siegel Center. 3.33 left in the game and Howard hanging around with VCU as the Rams lead by eight. Sean Robertson, John Feinstein, our entire Rams Unlimited crew. Two weeks before Christmas. That's exactly right, two weeks from today. Which is also the start of an important stretch for VCU because now we are in the holiday break. Students are back home, getting ready for, you know, the holiday. And this is always an important Training time. Training camp. Training, yeah. Yep. Training camp. You always talk about February and March is an important time, but Mike Rose always says that this stretch of the season could really, uh, could really show you how good your team is. Have a big effect on what you are in February and March. Oh, good hands there. Boy, he just got that over with the 10-second call. He did. Great defense, as you mentioned earlier, by Jay Nunn all night on Howard's point guards. Awesome. They have now 10 to shoot, and now Nunn, as soon as I say that, got his hand caught in the cookie yeah. jar. But that defense that he has played won't show up much in the stats, but it's been very important. I was going to mention that he only has only taken three shots tonight. Probably didn't need to, but the way Brandon Johns has played, along with uh, Josh Banks and David Shriver, yeah. But he's been doing everything else for Mike Rose. Banks and Shriver have really stepped things up in the second half. And Johns has been much quieter, so they needed that. Johns has 16 points. Only two have come after intermission as right. Williams missed the first. Nearly a 67% shooter from the strike for Jelani Williams, the grad student from Penn. We mentioned his story. Three different ACL tears in his career. I think I've fallen and get a few bruises on my hands and I'm whining. Three ACLs. And no and, brace. He's and got that's no sleeves. Surgery every time. Yeah. He has the two sleeves on, but no brace on either knee. He'll leave with a couple of points. And VCU leading by seven as we're near three minutes. Howard now attacking more out of the zone because of the time. Nod will work with 10 to shoot. Watkins looking at that zone. Here's Nunn with two to shoot. Long distance three. And a violation, a shot clock violation. That was a very poor offensive possession and a very good defensive possession. It just wasn't any ball movement. You gotta reverse the basketball. It's such a basic. But it's not as easy as it looks. Howard down by seven. Whoa! John's almost got on our lap. Wood for three. John's might have taken over doing the color there for a bit. Probably would have been a, an improvement. Oh, wow, I don't know about that. Got to keep him on the floor with his 16 points. Grad student from Michigan. He's probably pretty good. Settle misses on the three. Two yeah. good looks by Howard on that trip. That was a big miss by Settle. Could have cut the lead to four. It's going to be a big possession for VCU with two minutes to go, up by seven. Got a little clock here. Still that 2-3 zone shown by Howard. Those are long arms at the top of that zone with Settle, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Extra pass good to Banks look. for three. Didn't go in, but it was that was a good offensive possession. Howard down by seven. Here's Wood inside. He's got four guys around him. They turned it over. Oh, that's a block. Hawkins will get called for the foul. Be one and one. That's the seventh team foul on Howard. What, 97 seconds to go in the game, and now they're finally in the bonus situation. Again, I like the way this game's been refereed. They've let the kids play. Khalil Robinson, the senior from Columbia. 55 career games with the Bison, all under Coach Blake. Not many guys who can make that claim. Not at all. Not in this and Remember, they, they only played seven games in, in the COVID year. They had recruited a, a kid named McCour Maker, who was the biggest name to ever sign with an HBCU 
team. Everybody in the country recruited him. He was a top prospect for Kentucky, I believe. Uh, everybody. Yeah. And uh, he got hurt after two games. And left school, and now he's in the G League. Settle had the ball knocked away by Watkins. Kenny Blakeney thinks he still has a, the potential to have a good NBA career. But we'll see. 126 left in the game. Howard down by seven with the ball. You need a good shot here. Can Hawkins provide it? That's a tough shot over none. I don't think that was a particularly good shot, but he got bailed out. Two free throws coming for Elijah Hawkins. Brandon Johns Jr. gets called for the foul. Only his first. Eighth team foul for VCU now. Two shots anyway as Hawkins was in the act of shooting. Only two points tonight for the team's leading score. He's had a rough night. I don't know if it's because he was coming in off the bench, although he's done that before, or if he just didn't get going. Happens to good players. Didn't play in the game against Hampton. You mentioned averaging just over 14 points a night. Second free throw came off. See his frustration there at the miss. It's a two possession game right now for VCU, leading by six. Just wait, wait, wait until you get fouled. Or wait until the clock goes under 10 seconds, one or the other. Shot clock is at 10 for VCU. Now run your offense. Here's none. He got fouled. Yeah, he shoots two free throws. That was a dumb foul by Hawkins. None did, did not have a particularly good shot. And he just fouled him from behind. Hawkins tried to get the explanation from Les Jones. The explanation is you hit him. <laughs> not that complicated. Hawkins was saying, uh, you know, none may have extended that elbow a little bit. I trust Les. Although, again, showing what good officials do, he's now explaining, he is explaining it to Hawkins. And Hawkins is saying, yeah, I get it. Yep. Yeah, we mentioned this is an ACC crew. Veterans. Roger Ayers, Les Jones, Tim Clockerty. Of course, John Clockerty, Tim's dad, was not only a great ref in the ACC, but he was the supervisor of officials in the ACC for a long time. Really good guy. Two big made free throws by Jay Nunn. As Steve settled the third's shoe came off. And he'll uh, adjust. The VCU free throws have been up and down all season. Now at 60% tonight, 15 of 25. Roger Ayers uh, had to wipe the perspiration off the did. basketball, and now we're ready for action. It's kind of humid in here. A little bit. Yeah. Under a minute to go. VCU up by eight. Here's Odom. Rebound goes to Robinson. Here's Wood for three. That was halfway down, and Watkins, a big rebound for VCU. He missed that shot, but they got a second opportunity. They rebounded really well all night. Settle had to burn the foul, his fourth. And another one and one for Nunn and VCU up eight. This is the last one and one of the game for VCU to shoot. Nunn tonight, six points in the game, but we mentioned he was doing a lot of everything. Running the offense, playing great defense on Howard's point guards. I think his on the ball defense was a key in this game. You remember Tommy Amaker, right? No now question. the coach at, Har at Harvard. Yeah. He was so good on the ball. And when he was a senior, Keith Gatlin was a senior at Maryland. Keith Gatlin couldn't play at Duke because he had a bad back. And I was at Notre Dame a couple nights later when Maryland played there. And I said to Lefty, how's Gatlin? He said, oh, he's fine. I said, but he didn't play Saturday. He said, oh, he just had a case of Amaker back. Which a lot of guards did. Rebound to VCU. Shot that clock should is run off. The clock. I think Kenny's telling these guys not to foul. And they're not. Good for Kenny. Good effort by Howard. No question. And that's what Mike Rhodes is saying right now. 
to Kenny Blakeney. Good effort by your team. And we mentioned about the MEAC this year. They've given a lot of teams fits across the country and HBCUs as a whole. Howard did that again tonight. Yeah, they did. VCU gets the win 70 to 60, but it was much closer than 10. It and was we'll a talk, ball game. It was a ball game. And we'll talk more about it when we come back as VCU improves to 6 and 4 with a 70 to 60 win. Well, VCU snapped their two-game losing streak with a 70 to 60 win over Howard to improve to 6 and 4 on the season. And a good game, 70 to 60 was the final, but it was much closer than what the score indicated. Sean Robertson along with John Feinstein here courtside. And it was a tale of two halves, I think. You know, Howard started early. VCU pulled away. Howard would get it to within three. Another late run for VCU. Right. Got him the win. It was almost as if VCU needed to get a wake-up call when Howard would get close, especially in that second half. And uh, all credit to Howard because they just wouldn't go away. They hung in there. They made shots. They played good defense. They rebounded. Um, and... I think there was there was a moment there where Howard had gotten it to three, and Mike Rhodes called a timeout. And I think he had another ch come to Jesus meeting in that timeout. Like, you guys are going to guard or you're not going to play. You guys are going to be more alert or you're not going to play. And they were more alert, and they did guard better after that timeout. So a big win for VCU. As I mentioned, six and four on the year, five and one at home. The second game of a six-game homestand during this break that will continue Wednesday night as the Highlanders of Radford will come to, to town for a 7 o'clock tip-off against the Rams. Great crowd here at the Siegel Center. Thank you for joining us on Masson.